Hey everyone, if you saw my first uh, turbo compressor video, you'll probably remember that the uh, compressor moved a lot of air, but uh, failed to make any measurable pressure. So after some uh, further reading, I realized I had a couple of uh, major design flaws in my initial compressor, so I decided it uh, was worth uh, revisiting. Uh, so again, just to reset expectations, this is not meant to be an actual uh, turbo for an engine, but just something I'm doing for fun, and that best might end up as an over-engineered uh, tire inflator. The biggest flaw with uh, version 1 was the compressor wheel was much too large for the motor, and the compressor never spun fast enough. Um, as I mentioned in my first video, uh, Fusion 360 is not the ideal software for designing or optimizing a turbo compressor wheel and determining what size it needs to be. I decided this time around, I'm going to go ahead and just copy an existing compressor wheel from a small turbo I had uh, laying about. Um, I was able to directly measure some of the key dimensions, such as the back sweep angle and the blade curvature from that uh, turbine blade. The back sweep angle is important because this tends to broaden the efficiency range of the uh, turbo compressor, uh, but too much back sweep can actually lower the pressure ratio of the compressor. Um, the blade curvature is also key for the pressure ratio and the overall efficiency of the compressor. Um, typically, blade curvature is going to be defined by one or more uh, tangential angles of beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, etc. Um, but for my purposes, I made this much more simple and I measured the compressor wheel at uh, four different uh, points and approximated the blade curvature from those measurements with a uh, T-spline inside Fusion 360. And I was actually able to get uh, very close to the real uh, compressor wheel. So once I had a single blade uh, designed on the compressor wheel, all I had to do was make uh, 12 copies of the blade patterned around the hub. Um, and I then created six splitter blades by cutting every other blade in half. Um, splitter blades help uh, to increase the uh, inlet flow by not uh, blocking part of the inlet with the uh, upper part of the blade while still guiding air towards uh, the exducer. The next big design flaw of the version 1 of the compressor uh, was the size of the diffuser section in the housing and the actual profile of the uh, volute which goes around the uh, compressor housing. I ended up copying the volute profile from a drawing of a Garrett Turbo um, but I had to really fight Fusion 360 to be able to loft that complex profile around uh, the circle. Version 2 also now has around a 10 times larger diffuser than uh, version 1. Uh, the diffuser, I found out, is an extremely important part of the compressor housing because this is where all the uh, energetic air from the compressor wheel uh, gets to slow down for a little bit and build some actual pressure using uh, Bernoulli's principle. Um, this design uses a vaneless diffuser, uh, which is a little bit less efficient, but uh, is much less affected by uh, poor designs like uh, mine most potentially is. Okay, so now moving on to testing. Uh, let me go ahead and tell you about all my failed attempts. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. First, always wear safety glasses. From time to time, these things will blow up and little shards will go flying everywhere. Compressor housing backing plates need to be really stiff. Uh, you will shred compressor blades if there's any flex or misalignment in the motor uh, shaft, which will push the wheel against the housing. Compressor wheels must be balanced or they will eventually fatigue and explode. I've had several split at the uh, layer lines. Um, as they come up into different resonant uh, RPMs, they'll start to shake and then they just self-destruct. Um, lastly, at uh, 30,000 plus RPM, uh, the plastic blades of the compressor will lengthen and weld themselves to the housing. Um, I found a clearance of about 0.5 millimeters uh, works for these particular compressors. Okay, now on to the test rig. Um, with version 1, I hooked the uh, compressor directly up to an air tank to measure the pressure. Um, this was a really bad setup. Uh, turbo pumps actually generate flow, and when you uh, just deadhead them into a tank, they surge and stop flowing air completely. Uh, so I've designed an actual adjustable restrictor here that I can set that a point just below surge, um, and then I have a nice uh, 0 to 10 
uh, PSI gauge here so that I can actually um, measure the pressure uh, that the maximum output of the turbo itself. Yeah, it didn't do anything. I can tell empirically that it has uh, much more pressure than version one did, but I don't think I'm gonna get anywhere with uh, just a single stage. Even at three or 4S, it just, it's not moving enough air to build pressure. So moving on, let's go ahead and try the two-stage compressor setup. Okay, so it's hard to see, but the pressure gauge needle just barely moved off of zero. So we're moving in the right direction. Uh, so it's time, I think, for a full send. Uh, and I'm just going to overvolt the daylights out of the first motor, send uh, about 25 volts through the first motor, uh, and it'll be a 4S of 16 volts on the second stage. That should give us between 35 and probably 45,000 RPM on the first stage. So that should be a lot of air moving. <laughs> Here we go with 6S. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the smell of burnt electronics. Haha, -ha, we had success. Now, just before the magic smoke began pouring out of the motor, it made a whole 1 PSI of pressure. Now, that might not seem like much, but that's a pretty significant thing given the size of the motor and the amount of air being moved. As awesome as that was, I have to say I'm done for a while with uh, turbo compressors. I accomplished my main goal, which was to learn more about uh, centrifugal compressors. But uh, really, it's just not worth 3D printing these things or trying to develop them in uh, you know, a generic CAD software like Fusion 360, you really need a dedicated uh, software package meant for designing these compressor wheels. They're also really a pain to prepare. Um, I spent hours removing supports from the compressor housing, sanding, balancing, and adjusting each one of these wheels. Uh, you know, I looked on eBay and I can buy a cheap compressor wheel for something like 15 bucks and a whole turbos for a few hundred. And as a bad of quality as they might be, they're all better than an FDM 3D printed part. Uh, yes, SLA resin uh, would probably be better, um, but I don't know how the strength would be, especially in the thin, fine features like these blades. Um, someone out there wants to try it, uh, let me know. I hope you all found this uh, useful and uh, entertaining. Uh, I'll go ahead and post all of my CAD files uh, to my GitHub page, and I'll put the link down below. Um, also, you know, please do not attempt to build these devices unless you know what you're doing and have the appropriate safety equipment. I really don't want anyone out there to get hurt. Thanks for watching and uh, stay safe out there.